All right, in this video, I want to do a multivariable calculus problem, and here we're going to show a limit exists using algebra. So we're going to look at the limit uh, as xy approaches 0, 0 of x squared plus y squared over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1 minus 1. So uh, if I saw this on a test or a quiz and they said, hey, you know, does the limit exist or not, the first thing I would notice, well, you know, x, y approaching 0, 0, that's the origin. So I would approach the origin along maybe di different directions along the x-axis, the y-axis. You can come along a parabola or, you know, any old curve um, that goes through the origin. And I've got a video showing a limit does not exist by using this idea, so I don't want to rehash that here. Um, I think if you do that, though, and uh, you'll see, though, no matter which direction you approach, you're always getting the same number in this case. Okay, so that doesn't mean necessarily that the limit equals that number, but it says um, we haven't really shown that it doesn't exist. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it does. So there's one of two ways to do it. You can either use the definition. Um, you can also, again, just do some uh, algebra a lot of times. So maybe from very first semester calculus, you remember uh, having limits with radicals in there. And what you do is we're going to multiply by the conjugate to do this problem. So if you've forgotten this, you may even look at, you know, uh, uh, a limit problem from first semester calculus with some radicals in there. But the basic idea is we have two terms, um, and what we do is we're going to get rid of that radical. We're going to rationalize the denominator, and to do that, we'll multiply by the conjugate. So x squared plus y squared plus 1. So again, think about this as kind of being your a term minus your b term. The only sign that gets changed is going to be the, uh, the negative in the middle. That's going to turn into a positive. Uh, so that'll be the conjugate. So what I'm saying is a lot of times people want to change you know, every plus and minus or just change too much. So the only, the only sign we're changing is just the negative into a positive. Well, if we do it in the denominator, hey, we've got to do it uh, in the numerator. So in this case, um, I'm just going to clean it up here a little bit now. Uh, the numerator, I'm not going to do anything to. I'm, you know, I'm not going to distribute all this out or clean it, you know, uh, multiply it out and try to clean it up. To me, there's no real. Uh, I'm not sure why I would have to do that. You know, if I saw a good reason to do it, I would. But at this point, I'm not sure why I need to do it. But okay, in the denominator. Um, if you take the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1 and we multiply that by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1, all that just cancels and we get, you know, x squared plus y squared plus 1. And again, the point of multiplying by the conjugate, the point of multiplying by the conjugate, you know, notice when we multiply on the outside, uh, we'll get a positive square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1. But when we multiply on the inside, we'll get a negative square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1. So those would just cancel out, and we would be left with a negative 1 times the positive 1, uh, which would just give us negative 1. All right, so in this case, uh, we're really almost there now. Okay, so notice... In the numerator, again, we're not going to do anything uh, there just yet. x squared plus y squared, just writing it all down. x squared plus y squared plus 1, plus 1. In the denominator, notice our positive 1 and our negative 1 uh, is going to cancel out. So that will just leave us with x squared plus y squared. But oh, hey, now uh, this, is, this is the point. We can cancel out the x squared plus y squared from the numerator um, in the denominator. And now we're simply left with a limit problem where we can actually plug in the value 0, 0. So we'll just be left with the square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1 uh, plus 1. And now if we plug in 0 for x and 0 for y, well, we've just got 0 squared plus 0 squared plus 1 plus 1. Well, that's going to be the square root of 1, which is 1 plus 1, and that'll give us 2 as our solution. So, um, you know, if you've forgotten this, like I said, you may uh, look over some, some limits from first semester. A lot of the same tricks, you know, work. Factor and cancel, multiplying by conjugates. Um, so it's, it's, worth, uh, it's worth keeping those in mind because, again, the other way to show a limit exists, if you don't do some algebra or trig identity, you're going to have to use um, the definition, which is long and painful, and most people don't want to do it. So... Um, Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully nothing too confusing. Hopefully, hopefully it rings a bell for you.